so what I did was um, I basically immediately brought the safety team in and, and talked to them, what, you know, let them know what the situation was. Um, it basically Smart. had come to we either get this chip one way or another or we don't fly, like just plain and simple. You know, I mean, th there was no choice kind of in between, you know, maybe we can do this. It was, it was basically we, we get it or we don't fly. Um, and we put together a plan with them of uh, how would we we would be handling this. Uh, so the number of chips that we need is is in the range of you know thirty to forty chips, um, you know at least. And um, we were able to buy and find uh, fifteen. Welcome to Collaborative with Spencer Krauss. This is a place for accomplished professionals to talk about their life and their work in an informal and hopefully an insightful way. If you like what you see, hit subscribe below. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Collaborative Podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Krauss. Our guest today is Ricardo Alvarez, on for the third time. Ricardo is a program manager at NASA, uh, has a strong engineering background, cool guy all around. Um, Ricardo, welcome to the pod. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me uh, this third time around. Third time's the charm, right? Hey, my pleasure. Maybe we can do a fourth even. <laughs> <So. laughs> yeah. You only, me, only if the audience asks for it, right? Yeah. I mean, they haven't asked for much of anything yeah, yet. I, I think I got my first. <laughs> hey, hey, give us a shout. <laughs> they, I got our yeah. first um, non uh porno comment uh ever yesterday on one of these <laughs> and it was still somebody trying to sell like pr services <laughs> at least you're progressing right yeah no exactly we're going from bots to humans i mean i i, yeah. I think it was a human probably it was it was pretty uh yeah custom made so <laughs> going up in the world <laughs> yeah Pretty yeah, soon I can get those uh, dear influencer emails that my friends that have YouTube channels seem to get all the time. And they're just uh, like, hey, let us let us send you that. I, I, I swear to Christ, I knew somebody that got one for, um, they wanted to send them a um, 10,000 milliwatt laser. Um, and then on the website, it said 10,000 mil, we, we metered it and it was drawing way less power than that. And as you know, lasers are not 100% efficient. So yeah. it's probably using like, you know, maybe a quarter of a watt, you know, if that, uh -huh. instead of 10 watts as advertised. Yeah. And um, we, we looked on the website again and it said 10,000 milliwatt laser is a brand name only and not a specification. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to love yeah. that stuff. Anyway, uh, you and I were just talking about some interesting stuff, but I feel like as we do these short ones, the one that we talked about talking about that might be interesting to get into right now is how the chip shortage has been affecting you guys at NASA, yeah, and, uh, in Moffett Field. So, and yeah, so, um, you know, I, I figure everybody has their own story, right? And and um, we were talking about how hopefully these are the last stories we'll have about this, and you know, we want to talk about them, right? And you know, not knock on wood, right? You know, that we don't experience some this again <laughs> yeah um, uh, you know so although your desk is plastic there right so you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, yes it is um and my and mine is false wood so <laughs> knock on particle board <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so um yeah we we've also been hit with uh you know the the shortage in parts i would say i wouldn't just call it just a, a chip shortage although the biggest one that we have right now is a chip shortage, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, I, originally I had been looking at, you know, the, the big companies, right. You know, the apples and so on, um, you know, where they were being, uh, you know, talked about, about how they would affect the chip shortage, you know, and all that. Um, and so just in hearing that, right. You know, we, our, our team decided to get ahead of it. You know, and, and started looking at all the parts that we had, um, and what you know, what was in short supply and what was available in quite a bit of a quantity, um, and so we started doing that, and we we put together our, our list and so on. Um, and the thing with us is that, you know, working with contractors, right? You oftentimes 
you come up, you develop a, a piece of hardware, and you know now you've uh, hired a contractor to build it for you, right? Um, and the, uh, the 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 piece of that, that that slows things down is signing that contract, right? Yeah. Um, Typically, and, it's a two to six week delay in my experience. I'm guessing more when you're yeah. working for the Fed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's you know, there's there's all kinds of negotiations that go on, and you know, you know, by the end of the day, you're like, oh, okay, it's been two months. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I've been signed anything. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, um, and you know, and typically, you know, you just keep on working, right? And you keep on developing the hardware, um, and just improving it. Um, in, in this case, right? You know, as as many of you already know. Um, Time is just, it's just working against you even more than it typically does, uh, especially with parts. Uh, so, you know, we identified parts that are, that were in kind of a short supply, you know, not, not bad, right? Um, and, you know, we just kept an eye on it. Um, and then a few, about a week ago, we found an integrated chip that we, we need on two of our boards. Um, and that uh, that chip turns out that you know we couldn't find any. We couldn't find any from you know the the suppliers. You know, and, you know we figured you know what let's let's go straight to the manufacturer. You know, it's he sh he or she uh, should have some. Yeah. You know, and so we did, and and um, turns out that you know they basically told us whatever is available is out there already, and we will not have any until. Uh, February of next year. Holy um, crap! When do you need these by? What's that? When do you need these by? Uh, we need them. Well, we need them within about the the sooner the better, right? But um, at drop dead date on here is uh, anywhere about four to six weeks. Jeez. Um, yeah, and so you know, at that point, it was just a mad scramble of like, okay. Next thing is start talking to your friends. Who can we talk to that might have some parts that might have purchased some, maybe too many of them. You know, can we purchase it from them? This is that um, comms chip you texted me about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that. Uh, and then the other the other idea was also, um, let's look at hardware that uses this type of chips, right? You know, smart. And and if you know, and what hardware is using this chip, and can we purchase that hardware um, and then harvest it, right? Yeah, uh, so that's, that's what I would do. Which, which is really dicey, uh, especially if you're sending something up to space, right? Yeah, because, yeah but with that kind uh, of supply chain issue, what choice do you have? I mean, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. At that point, you you do what you what you can do, right? Um, although the you know, safety and mission assurance. Um, People don't don't like that, right? Because it's, <laughs> it's it presents a higher risk, right? Yeah, it's a higher risk to the mission um, and potentially to, to you know whoever is handling this equipment up in. in How do you basis. justify that to the the safety team? Yeah. Um, so so what I did was um, I basically immediately brought the safety team in and, and talked to them, what, you know, let them know what the situation was. Um, it basically Smart. had come to we either get this chip one way or another, or we don't fly, like just plain and simple. You know, I mean, th there was no choice kind of in between, you know, maybe we can do this. It was, it was basically we, we get it or we don't fly. Um, and we put together a plan with them of uh, how would we, we would be handling this. Uh, so the number of chips that we need is, is in the range of, you know, 30 to 40 chips, um, you know, at least. And um, we were able to buy find uh 15 nice or 15 were guaranteed have been okay i mean have been guaranteed but you don't have them in hand yet i don't have them in hand yet um and um it involves some uh using a, a different bucket of money to purchase these these items um before the contract gets signed and so you know we also need to adjust the contract you know which is going to cause a few problems in there but um you know it, and it's just this 
one little chip. How much so did far. these things cost before and after the shortage, if I can ask, just to put it in um, perspective? Before, before the shortage, uh, they were around $35, roughly. Okay. Uh, 30 and $35. Um, I got a quote of, uh, and, you know, and that was $35 each, right? Uh, I've gotten a quote for, what was it? $4,500 for 15. <laughs> <laughs> So like 150 bucks if my mental math is working correctly. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's no so joke. you know they 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 know we're hungry. <laughs> you know. The they, worst they, I heard was there was a I have a colleague who works in defense and he was telling me about STM32 ships going for 160 dollars right now, which I think they're normally under a dollar, right? Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know if they actually bought any. I think they held off with that vendor, but. Somebody was asking for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so this is 15 chips that we have only, right? Um, and uh, so it's mentioning roughly between 30 and 40. Um, so the plan at this point is to get a hold of those 15 as soon as possible. Um, you know, go through our testing program uh, and then essentially recycle them or reuse those boards for our flight mission, right? Um, although now they're telling me that for our flight mission, we will need, you know, instead of needing 10 of them originally, we will now need 12, very likely. Yeah, that doesn't give so, you much contingency. Yeah, not at all. I mean, I've got 12 that I need to use for our one of our tests, you know, because we have about two to three tests to still go through. Um, and so, you know, you know, I had, I have 12 that I'll be using for that. And then I'll have to reuse those for, for, for and hope to God that, or hope to somebody that <laughs> those don't die out in the process. Right. <laughs> for, for all yeah. the atheists. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, and so I, I have to cross my fingers, you know, and, and as well as procedure, right? I mean, because um, the other piece of this is you have to have documentation and procedures that are right on the money to make sure that those boards and those chips are not damaged in any way, right? Um, or stressed too much. Yeah, right? like too much ESD and, you know, who knows when right. it'll pop. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the handling of these has to be, you know, pretty delicate. Uh, much more than what would typically um, be the case in, in a regular mission, you know, just, just because, sense. yeah, in a regular mission, we'd have brand new boards and, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're ready to go. Right. Um, but here we have, or we will have 15. Um, yeah. So there's no so room for that. The, yeah. At this point there is, you know, like say out of the, out of the 15, I'll, I'll use 12 and, you know, I'll have, uh, what, three more, uh, just in case something goes wrong. There's yeah. not a lot of insurance. I um, I was going through some storage the other day, and I found um, a Pelican case with seven fried Arduinos in it from a project I did early in my career, uh -huh. you know, where they kept failing uh, because of a root cause that I didn't solve, and so I kept replacing them. <laughs> if you had some rookie like that on your team for this, you would be out of all of your inventory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the good thing is that I have a real solid team, right? Uh, the guys that I work with, uh, you know, they, they are just, you know, from the technical to even handling situations like this and just kind of rolling with the punches, the, the team is really solid. Um, you know, it's, I can really count count on them to come up with uh, ideas and just, like I say, roll with the punches, you know, and not get frustrated with the different obstacles that we, we are now encountering, which That's are awesome. now a whole lot more than what we typically do. You know? um, so, and then, and so that's, that's the, the chip shortage, right? Uh, which we, we now, as of yesterday, have also found out that there's another board in which we now have a, a chip that's, um, still available, but we could only find one outfit that's, that, that has some. So you bought them yet? And, 
Not yet. And that's, that's, that's the, again, the whole process of having that money go through, right? You know, Can't credit like, card it? Like without the, the dollar the, amount? Yeah. So, so the, um, because of the rules, um, the people who have the credit card are not willing to just purchase it like that, right? Before every person has, has had a chance to approve it, right? So, um, and then there's also other requirements that have now gone in. Um, you know, one of the questions they ask me is, you know, will this be used on any NASA computer? It's like, well, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you ask me that question? You know, it will be, you know what I mean? So, so then that now leads into further paperwork. That oh, because of like InfoSec, so information security. Ah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Somebody was telling me a story about the Jet Propulsion Lab and like a Raspberry Pi that was a backdoor and, and screwed some stuff uh, up. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, I'm guessing that has something to do with that question. Right, right. It, yeah, it does. So, excuse me. Um, so you know that that's now extra paperwork that takes more time, and you know, our approval list is usually not one or two people. It's like, you know, this this big, right? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Someone else like, might snag them chips, though. Is, is the problem yeah. with that? Yeah, you know, so, yeah, so, you know, a lot like of... Like, you would the, think, buy now, ask questions later, like, grab them. Worst right. case, we, we wasted five grand, but you've got people on salary for way more money than that who are now right. yeah. you know, waiting to get pulled to approve it. Yeah. You know, th these are unprecedented times. I mean, it's it's just... There's there's no around it, around this this problem, right? You know, you, we have to... The, the way we have to attack it is basically just be versatile quick and be able to change on a dime i mean it you know um my team can do that right but you know the, all the other processes are, are the bigger challenge right you know um you know and, and just and like you know it, it it adds risk to the mission right so obviously you know, depending who your safety rep is with, within the, the mission some of them don't even want to take if it increases it by one percent they don't want to do it you know? jesus yeah i mean it's it's getting yeah some sometimes it just gets to the point where it's like but this isn't like human lives are a danger this is like they might look like a jerk you know it sounds like yeah yeah well in some cases it, it can be right okay like human life um so it, it depends on the project and depends what um what piece of hardware it is so, in some instances, there could be life at stake, right? And and I understand that. That's, you know, fully understand that. You know, even one percent, it's it, that's not a good outcome, right? Uh, nonetheless, um, I mean, this is space. There's risk. Yes, yeah. that's part of. There's no getting around that. Business. Of, I know what you want to because you would be able to accomplish nearly as much. Yeah, yeah, you know. So, um, so it's presenting the challenge. All this the shortage of uh, parts and trying to get you know this big ship to move you know in the direction that you want it to move on a dime right so it, it takes a lot of conversations um face to face you know face to face on 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 microsoft teams <laughs> you know <Nice. laughs> um, which which works really well you know shameless plug for microsoft <laughs> teams is great i uh, we're using google hangout right now and you can see the glitches if you're watching this uh yeah. Should be using yeah. Microsoft Teams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe the next yeah. one we'll, we'll do on Teams. I've used both, yeah. Um, but yeah, Microsoft Teams has been uh, really good you know, to work with. Um, and so, um, but it, it's a lot of conversations with, with upper management and the people that have the credit card. Um, the time I had a credit card and, uh, you know, I, I got rid of it. I now regret that. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you get rid of it? I can ask. Well, it's it because what ha so in in purchasing within our group, in, the process is that the person that wants that piece of uh, hardware or so or, or whatever they want to purchase, you know, they input it into the system. That system has three or four levels of approval. Uh, the person with the credit card can't do anything until those levels of approval have been, you know. Uh, until it's gone through all that uh, approval. Once that has been performed, then the person with the credit card now has to go to the manufacturer or wherever 
to make that perfect, right? Yeah. Um, oftentimes, if the company is not um, in approved, then you know, then then they have to go through that process. So they purchase those items, and you would think that you're done, right? But it turns out that every month, um, that person with the credit card is having to basically go into a system and, um, you know, say, yes, I bought this, this was the, the amount, here's the receipt. I mean, this whole slew of paperwork. It's like, um, you know, when you have one, it's doable, and if it's for your project, but then people know that you have the credit card. Oh. And like, hey, can, can you help me out here? And, you know, and, and you, it's hard to say no to them, right, because they need it for their project. Um, and, and then the thing is, like, you know, you could easily be sucked into just doing that, right? You know, if if a project is in trouble and they don't have anybody else, and you happen to be the guy with the credit card, you you're now a buyer. You know, yeah, <laughs> you know, even though that's not what you signed up for. <laughs> you know? So so yeah, I I let mine just expire. You know, it's, yeah. The downside is that you have to depend on someone else to purchase uh, the, the items you need, right? Um, so they don't take your stuff doesn't necessarily take priority, you know. Unless it's falling apart, you know, <laughs> admit it. <laughs> but yeah, at the beginning, it was like, oh, man, I got to ask him to buy this. And he knows that I had a credit card. <laughs> <laughs> or he knows I have one. The other, the other case is like, he knows I have one, but I don't want to use it because I'm busy on something else, <laughs> you know, which is worse, you know, so. I mean, unless, unless, you know, you acknowledge you now owe the, you know, he or she a favor, you know? <laughs> right, right, yeah. Well, like, oh, I get but it. It's a favor, that, a favor that happens over and over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll never pay that back. Yeah. I have <laughs> someone like that in my life where, you know, we traded an hour for an hour, and I've probably used close to 600 hours of their time, and they haven't used, <laughs> yeah. you know, but 20 of mine, and I'm like, ah, I'm never going to pay this debt back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, so so that's kind of that's the the issue right now. Um, and again, we we continue to see more parts that are not available, and this is just trivial pieces that you know that are on, you know, boards that are not necessarily complicated, right? So, um, just dwindling parts, and it's just like, well, when are we gonna get, you know, restocking on this kind of stuff, you know? And it doesn't seem to be happening. Uh, which is kind of scary because, um, you know, like I say, for our process, it takes longer. And so, it, you know, I have to get um, creative of, of how to how to work these issues, you know, the new issues that come up, right, you know, that we haven't been dealing with at all. I mean, it's always been the case that we have, you know, tons of parts available to us, you know. Yeah, I would imagine. Plus, people yeah. probably want to fly stuff on a NASA mission so they can say they did it. So I would guess you yeah. get vendors really bending over to give you product yeah. normally. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. In many cases they have, um, and you know, really, really appreciate those vendors that have helped us out with a lot of the issues that we have. Um, you know, when when you're doing something that's the first time, right? It, it, you're gonna have all kinds of issues. Um, you know, we're constantly asking vendors to to do things that they've never done. Um, and, you know, a lot of the vendors just come through. I mean, it's just, it, it, sometimes it, you know, it amazes me that um, they, you know, they, they put their money in, in there and in, in doing these new things that we ask them to do, right? Um, um, and so they rightfully um, earned the, 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 you know, the, the naming on, on a NASA mission, right? You know, that's awesome. Um, because it's it's uh, you know these like say these parts or these hard pieces of hardware that we've done we that, that we've built sometimes you know they've never been built or you know or or sometimes we just we just want them to build one yeah right so they're never gonna see a return on that yeah exactly right <clears throat> you know um, so you know that that also becomes a difficult uh, problem to uh, handle um, so. Yeah, a lot of our parts are, are a lot smaller than your typical big company. Uh, but like you say, you know, uh, the return on, on profit on that is, is slim, you know, so. Yeah, I would think the direct return is less, but I mean, the goodwill, you know, the marketing of being able to say, you know, you flew something to Mars or, 
you, know, you were involved right. in that project. I mean, you know, that probably returns dividends, I mean, in some way, but yeah. You know, a small business yeah. is not going to be able to justify that decision. So you probably have to be a fairly large company to afford that, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, um, you know, so, so I guess the parts for the boards have, have been an issue in, um, and, uh, you know, it's something that's not going to end anytime. It looks like it's getting worse. You know, you know do you know what the root causes are of the shortages? I mean, I, I know this whole last, you know, two years or so or year, it feels like yeah. do has been like a, you know, master's class on, you know, how, you know, supply and demand affects the economy and what happens, but you've got yeah. only so much soap and everyone wants soap at the same time for toilet yeah. paper. I don't know. <laughs> or the paper. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, in, in talking with these companies, it's essentially just the, the demand is not that much higher. It's just that the demand has been pretty stable of what it was before, but the availability of those parts because people have not gone into work has dropped off. Uh, you know, so it's just people quite, not physically being in a lot of the foundries. Right, right. You know, yeah. um, at least that's that's what you know what we've encountered in, in the companies we've talked to. Yeah. Right? Um, and and then and then also the fact that you know a lot of these companies have also you know one in particular told us you know um, you know they they quote us a date way ahead next year because they are expecting instability the whole time right so you know they, they don't want to say we'll have it to you in two or three months from now and here you go again lockdowns or or whatever the case may be right <laughs> you know. <laughs> So they're just like, we'll push it out till next year, you know, and whatever's out there is whatever you get, you know, Jeez. you want to get white or black, you know? Yeah. <laughs> any color so long as it's black. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Holy yeah. crap, man. I mean, that's, I mean, it's, I guess on the other side of it, like the silver lining. Um, so I've been trying to clear out inventory from an old project that we canceled and I'm able to sell certain components on ebay for way more than you know i paid for them right right because of the shortage namely like nvidia jetson and xavier products are, are way yeah. up right now and yeah. some of the intel real sense stuff because they just discontinued that line is up and, and right. there's a few other things i've noticed but that's not worth it for the amount of damage it's doing to you know <laughs> brothers and sisters that are <laughs> trying to put stuff out there <laughs> For our pockets, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> For like a little bit of eBay gains. <laughs> yeah. 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 And and you know that that's the other thing, right? You bring up another point is that um because we have this shortage of parts and an increase in, in cost on that, uh then the project as a whole is now much a whole lot more much more expensive. It's not just a few dollars more. It's I mean, you know, we've we've gone from, you know like these chips, right, from 34 to 35 bucks each to to a much higher price, more than double, right? Five. You know? Yeah. yeah you know? um, and so that in itself creates, you know, projects that are more expensive for us, right? And so they've, they've allotted a, a, a budget for us and they're expecting us to come, you know, under that budget, right? Which on a typical year is, is doable, right? Yeah. You know? um, but now it's like we have no choice like what do we cut right we you know you you can't you can't go for the cheaper part because the cheaper part's not even there right? you know, you're stuck with what with what you have on there um you know and and it's a matter of helping uh you know upper management understand that these are the realities you know, it's not going to get any better these um, you know, they, they sometimes like to give us challenges. These challenges are not going to do anything, really. There is nothing to challenge you. <laughs> Come in under this date, this budget kind of challenge? Correct. You Correct. know, I need 12 weeks. We'll do it in six, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, you know, there's a limited amount of time that you can cut, right? You know. Yeah, um, I, I completely agree. Yeah. At a certain point, you go outside reality, and it just isn't achievable. Yeah, you know, the, the team, like I say, is, is a really good team. It's very efficient. It's very quick. 
um, versatile, uh, you know, and, and there's only so much you can cut in terms of hours to produce something where, you know, we're now being asked to do this cheaper. And it's like, I can take this whole instrument out. Is it going to accomplish the mission? No. <laughs> so why are we doing mission, you know? Um, so, you know, it's getting down to just getting rid of instruments, you know, uh, on like on our mission, right? You know, so, um, you know, we're, we're also fighting that battle of trying to keep our original complement of instrumentation on the mission, um, but yet at the same time, trying to uh, leave their fears that we will come through. And at the same time, you know, in, in the back of our mind, we're like, yeah, the parts are becoming more and more scarce every day. We need the money now, not tomorrow. <laughs> you ever considered, maybe this is a stupid thing to even bring up, but I'm just thinking what I would do if I were in that position. And again, and forgive me if this is naive, but just buy it with your own money and like beg for reimbursement or, you know, just like. Yeah. Um, we have been doing, um, but we know that we will not get paid for it. Or, you know, there's no reimbursement on that right so that sucks um so it's it's on small parts that we've been doing that and that's that's to save the the mission really um but when you start getting to i'm sure some asshole's gonna brag about it too like i saved so much money by posing this challenge it's like yeah. you, know, you just took it out of people's pockets yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly right right on the resume yeah. Yeah. <laughs> save nasa over $4,500. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then the other guy's missing $4,500. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, and my kid had to eat on the welfare lunch program for a year because of your ass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, uh, it, it is, it has gone to that point. Um, there's some teammates that are willing to go even higher in terms of, you know, what they're spending and, and uh, you know, I've had to tell them like, it's, it's up to you, right? It's, it's their decision, right? But it's, it's, you know, you, I don't want them to feel pressured that they need to do something like that. Right? Smart. Because it's, it's not, it's not right. You know, yeah, it's not right for, you know, to be spending well, I think our money. It, in my younger years, I, I would have let that pressure trickle down and, and you know, allow people to do that. And I think what uh -huh. you're doing shows, you know, tremendous restraint and wisdom and experience. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, you know, it, it just comes from yeah. someone who's been there and seen it and knows right. better, you know, and wants people, yeah. you know, you're not thinking myopically, you're thinking in terms of, you know, how is this going to affect people in the long run, which I think is smart. Right. right. Yeah. And, and, you know, and it, it affects the people, but then also the missions coming up, right? Because what will happen is, you know, they'll say, well, you did it under these circumstances, right? Um, and, uh, you know, you were successful. So clearly it shows that, you know, we can pull back a little bit more, right? So <laughs> now, you know, it, you now the next mission is now even more handicapped, right? Financially, right? So, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not a good thing, you know, in the moment it, it feels right because you're saving the mission, right? Yeah. But moving forward for the mission and the other, um, you know, engineers that will be on those missions, it, it's, it's, it's a very bad precedent, right? Um, you know, to show somebody that you, you know, you always want to show somebody that you want, that you can do it, but at the same time, you, you know, um, there, there has to be a stopping point because, um, you can't just keep squeezing people more and more and more and expect, you know, better and better results each time. Right. I mean, it's a, there's a breaking point, right? Agreed. Um, so, yeah. So, so that's, that's the issue with that. Right. Um, and we've seen this or I've seen this, you know, year after year, um, and especially now more with, with the pandemic and so on, you know, so um, yeah, the, you know, that it's, it's one of those uh, those challenges that is helping me to grow. You know, I always try try and take the bad moments and and you know help them to make me grow, right? You know, because it's it's just that's where you where I feel that people you know, learn the most. 
of if you allow it to happen, I think. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier, you know, the shortage of parts, you know, in having our engineers purchase parts on their own um, is great, you know, in the moment, right? Um, but, you know, it, it, it definitely is a negative effect on overall in, in the future, right? So, yeah, that makes sense. And you only get that favor so many times. And if somebody looks at it as, you know, like, hey, we only gave them, you know, 70 cents and a packet of chewing gum and they were able to build us a space shuttle. Exactly. It's yeah. like, yeah. where did everyone's 401k go? <laughs> <It's>, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I always, um, always look kind of further down the future, right? Because um, not only because I know that I'll be on some of these missions, but then also because there's others that will come after me, right? And, and I, I really don't want to screw it up for everyone else. Okay, well, I was successful, you know, let the other guy deal with, you know, like you say, that pack of chewing gum, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and let them build with that, right? Um, yeah. Of course, technology makes things, you know, for the most part, more efficient and so on, right? But uh, nonetheless, I think that it, it, it's not a, a good precedent when you, <clears throat> and I'll say it again, when you squeeze people too much, I mean, it's... I completely agree. You got to have some empathy um, for, for the engineer and the scientist, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so, and I've, I've been on the wrong side of that a bunch of times. And I think as a result, I mean, I've just learned how to walk away from a project that isn't, isn't yeah. right. But, I mean, to be yeah. able to, to stay in it, because, I, you know, I mean, you have to. You're employed, I guess, you know, and, and right. make it work. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's got to create some skills that, I mean, I... I you know, I'm not ashamed to say I, I haven't probably developed because of my, my position. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's, uh, you're right. I mean, it's the, the stress, you know, that, that, um, that you have to something sometimes go through, right. You know, it's, it's, you know, what makes a diamond, right. Is, is the pressure, right. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't want to put too much pressure that you crush it though, you know, right. You know, you know yeah. You know, my thing is, I like to develop people, right? And I like to develop uh, people with the right leader leadership, right? Same. Um, you know, oftentimes I'll ask them, just look at the stuff where I screw up and you, you'll learn the most out of the <laughs> situations, you know? That's awesome. Um, as opposed to the ones that I'm successful at, you know? Um, so, although the, the ones that I'm, that I'm successful at are have, you know, the reason for that is you know, I've failed many times before, right? Um, yeah. You know, and I've had, in some cases, I've had good mentors that have helped me to to see that that path. You know that, you know. And in other cases, I've had you know, just people that are just not <laughs> the the best mentors or mentors at all, and just kind of dug me deeper into the hole. <laughs> Yeah. Have you ever had a good mentor try to give you some advice and then just totally ignore it? You know, and just be like, I know better than you. <laughs> um, I haven't, um, but I have. Um, what what has happened in the you know, in the past is just at one time I was, and I don't know, I don't know if I've talked about this, but at one time I was I was given the um, mentor, um, which I felt there was no connection, you know. Um, I don't know and, that you brought this up. Yeah, yeah, and oftentimes you have to give it some time, right? You know, you can't just uh, right off the bat say yes, there's a connection, or no, there isn't. You know, so did you end up connecting um, with this person in the long run, or was this one where I just didn't? No, no, this this person just you know, they ended up having other mentees, and so you know, ah. <laughs> yeah, you know, but it's 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 a hard lesson. <laughs> hard lesson over here. Yeah, yeah. You know. Um, hard lesson to learn, but nonetheless, it's a lesson, right? So it's it's um, uh, something that I always, uh, the, the younger engineers, I always tell them, you know, that, that give it some time, right? Even even with me, you know, if, if you don't feel that connection, there's, you know, then let's talk about it. Let's see how we can work better, right? Um, That's awesome. We got to give each other some time to get to know each other, how we work, you know, um, what are... Um, weak points are and what what our strengths are as well right because we all have both weak and, and, and uh, strengths you know? yeah have you had the experience where you feel like you know when you get under real pressure with somebody like that's when the relationship develops because i feel like oftentimes that's been the case with me where i don't really know somebody until i'm thrown into a pressure cooker with them 
and trying yeah. to do some crazy and then you know you become really close or you know the problems become incredibly apparent and develop right. into you know you have to fire this person or, or something like that yeah 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 i mean um i've so what i've uh i have experienced it um and those are the moments where you where i've figured out like you said you know um man i'm so glad i'm teamed up with this person or like <laughs> Clearly, we are not going to work well together. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you try and dig deep and figure out, you know, how much of it is, is you know, yourself, right? Or, or, or yeah. the other person. Um, but yeah, th those are the moments where, where, yeah, I mean, those deep connections are, are made. And if it's the right teammate that you have, I mean, just wonderful things happen. And, and, you know, in, in my experience, I've actually felt it. It's just synergy of like this back and forth that we we both know the the boat is sinking, but we both know that we're going to survive this. And yeah, and, well, there's no way you're you're going to if nobody does anything. So you just right. have to work together and rise to the occasion, or it's going to right. sink. <laughs> right. Yeah, and, and yeah, and, and you get those teammates where you where you you know you help out each other, right? You can just feel this. I don't know what to call it, this energy that just you know, keeps going back and forth and you can see the progress, right? Um, as opposed to in, in, you know, I've had other situations where the problem hits and it's like just, here's the big problem. And by the way, here's your teammate that is just dragging you down, you know, deeper and deeper, keep swimming. Oh, this sucks. <laughs> this is horrible. We're never going to get out of this. This boat's going to sink for sure. <laughs> yeah, totally get toxic personality. <laughs> I used to, well actually it's it's funny because I used to work with a, an engineer. He had um he had three degrees, I think it was. Oh wow. But this guy was the most pessimistic guy I have ever worked with. I mean that sucks. in his mind, but but it was it was funny because in his mind nothing was ever going to work. The the boat was always gonna sink no matter what. <laughs> Right. That's at the horribly same time, defeatist. <laughs> at the same time, um, it, it wasn't one of those um, negative attitudes type, but it was more a pessimistic outlook that you can talk to. You, you'd be able to talk to this guy and be like, "Oh, come on, man! Like, we can figure this out." Like, and he was like, uh, "But if we do this, it's gonna sink again." But I'll keep doing it, you know. So. So this person would keep working the problem, right? So it wasn't like just it's it's you know fatalistic. Oh, well, that's pretty good at least. I mean, right. So you and could motivate right. them. That's that's cool. Yes, you could motivate him, and the whole time it was kind of a a running joke. I mean, it was just the whole time it was funny. You know, I mean, he really <laughs> did see that. He did see the boat just sinking the whole time, but he. At the same time, he thought that that was kind of a, a funny thing that he couldn't get his mind out of that, and yet. So he he was self aware at least. Is, he was self aware, and that's yet cool. he could see Ricardo, you know, believing that the boat was still going, <laughs> was still going to uh, float with half of it gone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so it, working with that person, it was just he kept working and working. You know, and at the end of the day, we we accomplished the mission right but it was nice. um it, it was it was a very interesting um experience because like say typically you know um pessimistic or at least my experience with pessimist uh, pessimist person is that you know they'll just stop and it's just like we're done it, it, it's not gonna work period you know well they'll stop and then in my experience they'll also convince other people to stop you know and yeah. Yeah. Like this isn't a battle worth fighting, you know. And right. Yeah. Like that, yeah. I haven't experienced a person that'll continue to complain but also contribute, you know, which is right. Really kind of funny. <laughs> like, it was, yeah. It was. Yeah. It was funny. Um, and this, you know, this engineer, like, say he, he was. That was. That was just his attitude the whole time. Like it's never changed. And and, um, you know, it's it's been about what four years, five years since I haven't seen him. Um, but even the last time that I saw him, which I wasn't working with him anymore, it was the same mentality. It was just, <laughs> it's 
just like, <laughs> like, what are you working on? Oh, this one project that's never going to make it. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know. Dude, how many times have you seen projects you didn't think were going to make it work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pay attention to your own experience. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, so it, it's, um, yeah, it, it was interesting working with that person. Um, uh, but yeah, you know, and it's actually kind of good to have a person like that on the team, right? Because, Intra, uh, because they find failure modes, I'm guessing. Like they, do, they, they do. They do. And, and it's a positive way of finding them. It's not just this drag on the team and, you know, just doom and gloom, right? It was, yeah. Well, I mean, that sounds pretty cool if, the, if they're at least, you know, speaking up and contributing. and Right, right. Yeah. It's, it's like doom and gloom with ideas of how to prevent it. Yeah. <laughs> but, the, but if we did this, we could keep that from occurring. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll still fail. <laughs> <laughs> because of this. Well, how do we prevent that from occurring? Yeah. 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 You know, um, so yeah, you know, that, that's, that's, uh, that was early in my career, um, you know, and um, I wasn't managing at that point, but nonetheless, I would, I always had an aspiration to manage projects, even from the beginning. And so I'd always poke my nose in, in the management uh, field. Um, Same. I, and like try to get to know the managers ever and like, you know, see what they're doing early in your career at least. You're like, I can yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah. Just being the fly in the wall, you know, just being swatted around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure not all those managers appreciated me. <laughs> You know, poking around and just trying to learn, right? You know. Um, yeah, no, I, I had a CEO at a startup I worked for years ago tell me, you know, like I, I was trying to learn and I kept asking him for advice. He's like, I don't like giving advice. <laughs> you know, like, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, sorry. So, but yeah. So that, yeah, that's, um, I don't know. I, uh, that's that's the story for, for this time, I guess. If you've stuck around this long and you like what you've heard, please give us a like and smash that subscribe button. Or smash that like button and give us a subscribe. We're always looking for new and interesting people to have on the show. If you know anyone good, send an email to podcast at ska.solutions or leave a comment below. Thanks again for listening and please come to the next one.